Because crazy is good. That's the tagline from Canon Rumors about the patented Canon 50 to 80 mm f1.1. Now let's be honest, that lens is more likely to just stay as a concept on a piece of paper on a shelf in Canon's back stock room than it is going to end up as an actual lens on a shelf in a shop for us to buy. But it does open up the question that I'm seeing people ask of does lenses like that mean that prime lenses are going to be a thing of the past? No. No for a couple of reasons. There's not just one advantage to prime lenses, there's several. A prime lens doesn't zoom, obviously, so it can be optimized for that one specific focal length. So that means that for an equivalent sized, equivalent spec prime lens, it generally gives you better image quality than a, an equivalent zoom lens. Because if you look at, say, an f2.8 zoom versus an f2.8 prime, because the zoom has to move, because it's got more than one focal range, the lens is a lot bigger than the prime lens. If the prime lens were the same size as the zoom lens, then it opens up the ability of having a much faster aperture. Hence, an f2.8 zoom lens, the same sort of size, you could get an f1.4 prime. And you've only got to look at the pattern diagram of that 50 to 80 millimeter f1.1 to see how ludicrously big the lens is going to be. Roughly, that's got to be about 20 something glass elements. It's got, probably got more glass elements than pretty much any zoom on the market. And the thing is going to be ginormous. It's probably going to be even bigger than that 28 to 70 millimeter f2 that they produced. So not only is it going to be ridiculously big, but it's also going to be ridiculously expensive. Like it's probably more expensive than a 600 f4. And with that many glass elements, the lens might be an f1.1 aperture on paper, but in terms of t-stops, it's probably more like an f1.4 anyway, so you might as well just stick with two prime lenses. However, thinking about it, there is one lens that I think Canon should make, and I think would settle an age-old argument. Because how many times have you heard people question the argument of 24-70 f2.8 versus 24-105 f4? trade-off between the extra focal range versus the f4 aperture or what do we go with well i wonder if canon or anyone else for that matter could maybe go for a lens to settle the debate a 24 to 105 f2.8 because if you think about it the 24 to 105 f4 that they've now produced for the rf mount is marginally smaller than the 24 to 105 for DSLRs. They're going to soon be announcing a 24 to 70 f2.8 to go with the Holy Trinity, and odds are that's going to be slightly smaller than the DSLR lens as well. And then they made that 28 to 70 f2 monster, which is just fecking enormous. But I'll bet a 24 to 105 f2.8 would be smaller than the 28 to 70 f2 behemoth and would make an absolute killer general purpose lens because I think 24 to 70 f2.8 are good, but at the long end with f2.8 for things like portraits, it's okay, but it's not ideal. People generally tend to prefer things a little better like the fast 85 primes, but 105 f2.8 would give you that extra little bit of compression that I think would make the perfect all round lens. But what do you guys think? Would you like to see a 24 to 105 f2.8? Would you consider buying a 24 to 105 f2.8? Or is there another lens you would like to see released that is not an 8 to 600 millimeter f1.4 with stabilization? Yeah, I know. But leave your thoughts and comments in the box down below. Thank you so much for stopping by, and hopefully, I'll see you in the next video.